Let me warn you. I am Mr. Butterfield. This is my line. These are my passengers. You bother any of them, I'll hound you from here to kingdom come. Now, Mr. Butterfield, we don't aim to bother anybody. We just aim to get what's underneath that tarpaulin up there. That's all. I think our cattle are over the ridge. I can hear them. Let the dust settle first, son. Ben. Tell him to stay where he is. Stay where you are! What do you want? Those are my cattle. I want them back. We'll get them back in five minutes. You'll get them back in five minutes. God! You gonna let them do this to you? Not much else I can do. Don't anybody move. If you move, I'll kill him. Easy, put him on his horse. Aren't you gonna do something? What, and get myself shot too? That must be Ben Wade and his gang. What's his name? Bill Moons. Well, where does he live? He used to live in Contention City. We'll take him there. I can't. My passengers are due in Bisbee. We're only a few miles from Bisbee. Take him to Bisbee and put him on the next coach back. No man lives, that's where he should be buried. We'll need those horses. Why? So you don't ride to the marshal. Get off. All right, boys, get off. We'll turn them loose just this side of Bisbee. You wait! My pa will kill you! Mark. Sir? Okay, you can tell your boss. We didn't even hold hands. I think we could have gotten along without that last remark, don't you? Well, I wouldn't want Mr. Fabian to spend a sleepless night. All right, Steve. You've been saving it up for hours. Say it. No, I'm waiting to hear how you'd say it. You're a trusting soul, aren't you? Not anymore, not after tonight. Why didn't you tell me you had a date with Fabian? I meant to, but I forgot. You forgot a lot of things. You forgot to tell me he was a friend of yours as well as Neil's. That he bought Neil's paintings. Did you also forget to tell me he bought Neil's wife?
The rain woke me. Get you up, too? Yes. The rain. I'm leaving tomorrow. Leaving? Yeah. You won't have to put up with any more of my insults. Steve, the things you believe about me, they're not true. Forget it. You don't have to count to me for anything. But I want to. Why didn't you tell me about the crest, about Fabian, about everything? What is it between you and him? There's nothing between us. Is that why he looks at you the way he does? Like he can't wait to get his arms around you? I can't help how he looks at me. But his arms have never been around me. Nobody's arms. Not for a long time. Not even Neil's? Not even Neil's. Well, weren't you in love with him? I was once, but... Love is something that has to be kept alive, and... It wasn't. I can. What is this? Another of those phony stars I've been getting since I come down here? Oh, you know it isn't. How do I know? Steve! Quite a surprise to hear a woman singing in my house, eh, Johnny? That's quite a surprise. Me? Sure, I'm decent. Gilda, this is Johnny Farrell. Johnny, this is Gilda. So this is Johnny Farrell. I've heard a lot about you, Johnny Farrell. Really? Now, I haven't heard a word about you. Why, Ballard? I wanted to keep it as a surprise. Was it a surprise, Mr. Farrell? It certainly was. You should have seen his face. Did you tell him what I'm doing here, Ballard? No, I wanted to save that as a surprise, too. Hang on to your hat, Mr. Farrell. Gilda is my wife, Johnny. Mrs. Ballard Munson, Mr. Farrell. Is that all right? Congratulations. Oh, you don't congratulate the bride, Johnny. You congratulate the husband. Really? Well, what are you supposed to say to the bride? You wish her good luck. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. My husband tells me you're a great believer in luck. We make our own luck, Johnny and I. I'll have to try that sometime. I'll try it right now. Tell him to come to dinner with us tonight, Ballard. It's an order. Come along, Johnny. We let Gilda get dressed. Look your best, my beautiful. This will be the casino's first glimpse of you. I look my very best, Ballon. I want all the hired help to approve of me. Glad to have met you, Mr. Farrell. His name's Johnny, Gilda. Oh, I'm sorry. Johnny is such a hard name to remember. And so easy to forget. Johnny. There. See you later, Mr. Farrell. That's right, Mrs. Munson.
How much money do you make, Dan? Huh? Not, not very much. Can you figure that's your business? Yes, I do. How do you figure that? You must need money awful bad to do this. Maybe I do. How much they paying you? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars, that's all. Ah, that's a lot of money. How'd you like to double that and save yourself a lot of time, a lot of trouble? How you reckon I'm gonna do that? He's dropped that gun. You let me walk out of here worth four hundred dollars to me. <laughs> it's kind of reckless you, isn't it? I mean, especially since you're so sure your men are coming to get you out of this. No, they are. Oh, yes, sir. They're coming. Only, you see, I like to do things real easy, you know, real peaceful. Well, look out at a peaceful scene. Go ahead, you might recognize somebody. That's Mrs. Moon's in front. Man, that's his son, Bob. She had another son. He was the stagecoach driver, Bill Moons. Butterfield coach, maybe you remember him. Yeah, it seems to me I do. Kind of hot headed fellow, wasn't he? Not reasonable, like you. I sure am, friend. I'm so reasonable, I'm gonna let you walk right out of here. The only thing is, it'll be just before 310, and I'll be right behind you with a shotgun. You're a very intelligent man. And I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want to try to corrupt your morals. That's mighty nice of you. You know something? I think I know what's bothering you. And I wouldn't dream of suggesting that you let a murderer walk out of here free. But you see, Bill Moons drew first. Yeah, it makes it self-defense, doesn't it? I mean, I don't go around just shooting people down. I mean, this is... That isn't nice, you know. I work quiet. Like you. All right, so you're quiet like me. Well, then shut up like me. You know what? I have the funniest feeling. We're not alone. Maybe we're haunted. Maybe if we go inside, it'll go away. Besides being pretty, you're positively intelligent. Come on. No. You know, I have the funniest feeling somebody said something. Maybe the lady forgot to tell you. Her husband lives here. For a long, long time, I've taken husbands little by little, in small doses. So that now, I've developed a complete immunity to them. You're through for the evening, son. Scram. Ah, so he runs this joint too, does he? I said scram. For two cents, I'd... You'd what?
That's great, hitting a man when he's drunk. He shouldn't get drunk on my time. On your time? I thought that was settled. I take care of everything that belongs to the boss. What's his is yours? He went to a picture show tonight, alone. Really? Would you like to know whether I enjoyed it? That's your story. That's what I told Bell, and that's what you're going to tell me. Making me deceive my husband. I got some news for you, Gilda. He didn't just buy something. He's in love with you. Is that so hard to understand? And you're not going to do anything... I've got some news for you, Johnny. I'm going to do exactly what I please, when I please. I was true to one man once. And look what happened. I made up my mind then that This I isn't about us, it's about him. Really? You don't say so. And get this straight. I don't care what you do. But I'm going to see to it that it looks all right to him. From now on, you go anywhere you please, with anyone you please. But I'm going to take you there, and I'm going to pick you up and bring you home. Get that? Exactly the way I'd take and pick up his laundry. Shame on you, Johnny. Any psychiatrist would tell you that your thought associations are very revealing. What are you talking about? Any psychiatrist would tell you that means something, Johnny. Did you hear what I said? Sure, I heard what you said. You're going to take me there and pick me up. All to protect Bell. Who do you think you're kidding, Johnny? I hated her so I couldn't get her out of my mind for a minute. Tell him to come out in the open. You tell him yourself. Baggage car. Get your clothes on. You're getting out of here. Are we, Johnny? Are we? Not we. You. You do hate me, don't you, Johnny? I don't think you have any idea how much. Hate is a very exciting emotion. Haven't you noticed? Very exciting. I 
hate you too, Johnny. I hate you so much that I think I'm going to die from it. Darling. I think I'm going to die from it. You left it open when you came in. is more than 2,000 miles away. I don't think he'll make it. I don't think he intends to try. It's all right, Gong. Well, can we go now? It's dangerous to wait any longer. Max, there isn't any real chance of our being caught, is there? I mean, it would sort of take the fun out of everything. Well, Chris, our little journey may not be as gay as the one we'd planned, but I promise you it won't be dull. Relax, Mr. Fabian. Steve. You're not going anywhere. Oh, Steve. Steve, I... It's all right. She can tell me about it later. You're a very determined intruder, Mr. Emery. That's right. Let's get out of here. Don't rush off. There's something I'd like to ask you before you leave, if you don't mind. Have you also enlisted as a British agent? Didn't you know? Mrs. Emery has been deceiving both of us with a third party. Her Majesty's police, no less. What government do you represent? Or are you here simply in the role of a private citizen? Steve! Oh, Steve! <laughs> Get out of here, oh. Max. Max, you're hurt. We'll have to delay our departure. Olaf, take her upstairs. Lock her in my room. Go and get some brandy. Franz, quickly. Max, I. I don't think there's any point in your waiting, after all. Max, Franz, there must be something we... No. It would be wiser if you all left at once. What do we do with him? You don't want us to leave him here. Take him along. I don't want him in this house. His presence here offends me. Olaf, I'm remaining here. 
You'll see to it that Mr. Emery leaves with you. Yes, sir. As for Mrs. Emery, I myself will make the necessary arrangements concerning her. Under the circumstances, I think it only fitting. Olaf. Take him out. If you're waiting for my last words, you've heard them. Come on, we can't wait here any longer. Max, we can't leave you this way. Veronica, please. Look at Trinidad. You know, you're going to find Chicago kind of cold after the tropics. Am I? <laughs> 